Did you know that electric and electronic systems are the number one cause of warranty claims for automakers? Well, a company called ActNano has a solution that could put a big dent in those warranty claims. Tamora Mod is the CEO of ActNano, and they've come up with a new coding for electronic systems. And Tamora, you please explain what it's all about. Yeah, so we um, uh, developed this new nano coding that um, covers the printed circuit board. This is the, the green wafer that's inside uh, your cars. Now there's many of them uh, that, that are run. And we um, have found a way to protect the entire PCBA, the printed circuit board assembly inside the car. And that was difficult to do in, in the past because you have connectors and processors and antennas on there that other coatings cannot uh, protect uh, processors because of the heat, uh, antennas because of the signal attenuation that happens, and connectors uh, because of the conductivity uh, not being uh, enabled through the coating. So, so I think uh, we have a unique product here um, and we are making a lot of progress in, in the automotive world as cars bring on more and more um, electronification in the car, uh, which is not electrification. So electronification would be having more PCBs in the car. So now you have door lock systems and power brakes and, and power steering systems. They're all having more and more um, um, electronics in the car. And then of course there's electrification of the cars, which is having electric cars instead of the combustion engine cars. So both those trends have, have led to having more electronics in the car. Um, and we believe that all these electronics in the car uh, for the safety of the passenger need to be protected, especially the autonomous vehicle or ADAS uh, boards uh, inside the car should be protected from, let's say, a coffee spill or as something as simple as a, as a condensation bead uh, when you have your car parked in a garage and you go outside to, uh, to uh, a cooler uh, temperature. Explain a little bit about this nano coating. It sounds intriguing. Yeah, so this um, this was um, an idea that uh, uh, we uh, I came up with uh, from my background in electronics manufacturing that we needed a, a product that could cover the entire PCBA. And one thing that was missing before is that you couldn't put it on the connectors. You couldn't put it on the antennas uh, for a simple fact that it's, a, it's an insulation uh, material and you put it on the connector, you can't make the connection. The, the insulation keeps the conductivity from happening. So the idea was, what if we could stabilize something between liquid and solid? Uh, let's call it a gel state or a, a, a jello is, is in that transition state uh, between liquid and solid. So something like that, then you could put it on the connector and you could displace the, the material, just like you would with any other liquid, and you could make a connection, you would have full conductivity. And in many instances, when you retrieve the probe, it would heal itself like every other liquid likes to do and it likes to normalize. So that was the idea that if we could come up with a coating that could uh, be put on the entire PCBA, including the connector, including the processor, including the uh, the uh, uh, antenna then we would have uh, then we would have a full complete system and you could actually take this PCBA now the the green wafer and you could submerge it underwater and it would work right before you couldn't do that so notice how your phones now are um, able to uh, thro be thrown in the in in the water and that then used to exist so uh, these kinds of technologies are being developed for that uh, purposes where you can have a full submersible uh, PCBA, and that uh, didn't exist uh, before us. Tell us a little bit more about this nanomaterial. I mean, what is it? What are the special properties of it? Yeah, so the the, the special property is it's very thin compared to compared to uh, your traditional coating and glues and things like that. So so we are we're a lot thinner, uh, maybe it's sometimes a thousand times thinner. Uh, as a coating, uh, they're, they're, the, the materials used are very um, uh, uh, 
readily found in Earth. So we're not using any rare, rare Earth materials or anything like that. Um, they're very human safe and environmentally safe. A um, lot of our chemistries are siloxane based. Uh, so this would be silicone, uh, just like your semiconductors and everything else uh, is. Um, and um, most of them are just arranged in a way that they create a very thin, uh, sometimes a monolayer um, of, of coating. A monolayer means it's just one molecule thick. Uh, but uh, most of the time, we, we go a little, a little more than that. Um, uh, but we are very much thinner than your traditional conformal coatings, and they're um, they're a little bit uh, siloxane based, where we can we can arrange them in a. There's a process called cross-linking, where we take these uh, silicones and we cross-link them uh, and uh, and create a a if you can imagine a a nano mesh um, of coating on top of the the PCBA. And even though you're coating the entire PCBA, I mean, th there's a lot of wireless. Uh, uh, components in those boards too, right? I mean, you've got Wi-Fi or Bluetooth or other things. Uh, obviously, I guess I'm saying uh, this does not block those signals. No, it doesn't. So that's that's a very good question, uh, John, because I, I think not only the current signals, Wi-Fi, Bluetooth, GSM signals, uh, but the future signals, we're protecting against future 5G signal. Um, uh, we are the only co coding certified for 5G signals. And 5G signals are a lot more sensitive, as you as you might have noticed, because you need sometimes line of sight to the tower. And, and if you're two rooms deep into your house, you won't get a 5, 5G signal. These are much more sensitive signals. So we, what we last thing we wanted to do is dampen the 5G signal because we know the car of the future is connected. It is talking to the cloud. It's talking to the other cars. Now, if you dampen that signal on the 5G antenna of the autonomous vehicle, you put a danger to the car um, or and to the passenger uh, sitting in the car. So um, our coding is designed to have zero signal attenuation. Uh, which is uh, measured in something called a bit error rate, and we, we, we measure against uh, other uh, signals on other antennas that are not coded, and then we measure it against a coded one to make sure that there is no signal loss between the two uh, components. And, and apparently you're looking beyond just the, the electronics and the electrical systems in cars. Uh, I saw on your website that this can be applied to textiles, to seat fabrics in cars, and even to the glass as well. Yes. So we have some nascent technology. Um, we, we realize that there's multiple applications on other surfaces. Now, uh, this is very important for us to talk about in the PCBA and the autonomous vehicle uh, context for a very simple reason. Here, lives depend on it, whether we get this right or not. So, so it's a lot more important to us. But there are other benefits that we can get by putting on other surfaces. So, for example, if you, we put an anti-fog coating on a windshield. Now, in a combustion engine car, when you want to defog your, your uh, windshield, um, that heat doesn't cost you anything. It's, it's basically coming from the engine and you can, you can do that. But if you try to do that in an electric vehicle, which is where the future is and where everybody's going, um, now it's gonna cost you range. So you'll go five miles less or 10 miles less because you were decoding and defrosting uh, your, your, uh, your windshield. We believe we have a coating that is an anti-fog coating that you can put on the, on the glass that it, fog would not appear on the on the, uh, the the windshield, keeping giving you recapturing that range back to the to the uh, electric vehicle. So that's one area that we thought about. Seats is another area where the fabric coating comes into place. Uh, we we were talking to some very large seat manufacturers for for uh, automotive. Um, they are looking at it much more seriously than they used to because of mobility as a service. So if you think about mobility as a service, now you've got an Uber uh, that's going around. In the old days, if you spilled ketchup in your in your car, you know your your kid Johnny spilled a ketchup on the car, and and that was okay. But now, if you get into an Uber and there's a there's a ketchup stain, that doesn't feel uh, feel right. So so in in the end. As mobility becomes a service, the cleanliness of this seat is 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 uh, very important, and we can create a surface on this seat that is um, hydrophobic, which means that if you spill ketchup on it, it just wipes off. There's there's no there's no stain there. Okay, last question. 
I, I know you're involved in the electronics industry. When it comes to the automotive industry, are automakers already using your nano material? And can you tell us who, if that's possible? That's correct. It's public knowledge that uh, that uh, American automakers like Tesla, Ford, um, and others um, are using our uh, product today. There's cars on the road. If you uh, dismantled uh, a Mach E or a Tesla or a, uh, or one of these, uh, you would you would see our product in there. So they are using it. Uh, we hope that a lot of uh, foreign um, manufacturers also start uh, using it in Germany and Japan. Well, good. Tamara Ahmad, thanks so much for bringing us up to speed with what Act Nano is all about and uh, how you're making inroads into the automotive industry. Thank you for having me.